Get off the freaking net! And welcome to the Blazon Nation! Where the World Wide Web and real life world collide and brings current events to you, then takes it all into debate. With your host from the depths, JBJ Blaze! And welcome back to Blazon Nation! After, I guess, about a month or so after number 14 and then next thing I know it takes literally oh wait yeah that that brings us into at least one of Fang's pet peeves but um uh, about a yeah a, a month anyway since uh, since 14 aired and then I finally got it edited and ready to put out. And, but anyway, this is Blaze on Nation episode 15, recorded on July 5th, 2014, and, um, as you'll see in the other portrait, well, he's not really a guest tonight, but he is a co-host. Let's welcome the thing again. If you'll speak. <laughs> I was expecting applause, but that's okay. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yep, that's me. But, um... So actually, let's, let's first get to your pet peeve thing. Because during the pre-show, you were talking about... How you don't like when people say pre with every word... Or literally with every action. Yep. I just I just don't understand why people would use literally in a figurative sense. Because if you think about it, if you say you're literally you were literally on fire, then people were actually going to think you were on fire. Like you were burning, you were running around like a stunt man on fire. It's like you know, did you suffer any degree burns or anything? And they're like, no, what are you talking about? And I said, well, you then weren't literally on fire. And then the other thing is the whole pre-order aspect of getting games. And it's I think pre-order was a term that was invented by some sort of nerd who had way too much time on his hands. And he says, you know, instead of saying order before it releases, let's just use the word pre-order because... Pre technically means before, and now it's gone to every single media outlet there is once the 20th, 21st century hit, and it's become a world wide web word that is used by every single company outlet. And I just, I just don't understand it. Someone help me. <laughs> well, I I, I, I'll help you in terms of the like thing. Because once I heard you say like, I'm just thinking, yeah, and that's one of my pet peeves is when someone overuses like. Because nowadays, people will say, I was like, what, what are you talking about, man? Or he was like shoving something over to like somewhere else. And uh, my whole issue with that is why in, in I'm trying to say this without sounding hypocritical by saying like, um, but um, when a person is saying it as if as in the way of someone is saying something or just doing something. Or, or, so let, let's get to the part of someone is doing something. If someone is like pushing a barrel of water to the other side of the yard, are you comparing something there? Because like is usually used as a comparative term. That's where simile comes from, like, mm -hmm. or as. But yet, there usually is no 
comparison there or when you're talking are you comparing that person saying those words to another person talking saying those exact same words so i guess in a what in a bit of a throwback to the um to things issue with pre order there's real uh, other than with pre order the only difference there is again you're buying it before the release date but is there really any difference at all between you saying something or doing something than like saying something or like doing something or or unless maybe you don't have the full quote or something yeah yeah that's also sometimes why people say the word like it's because they don't know exactly what they said so <clears throat> they try to make up a comparison to something that they previously said and, and I use like or as as a thing to compare or use a simile but I don't I th I think like and you know and um and uhs and but 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 like Jeff Goldblum they're just bad habits and I think what influences this bad habit is that people don't actually focus on what they are saying because they may have to say something that's immediate they can't just pause and th think what they're going to say but it's just a bad habit so there are a lot of people out there who do that and they've been doing it for quite some time so it's hard to break that kind of habit especially if you've been doing or saying something for that long well I guess with that all said before we run out of time hopefully maybe we can get this in done in an hour who knows but I guess that's how most podcasts run but <coughs> Sorry. Oh. No, no need to be sorry, because I just realized I don't have this one bumper properly linked for some odd reason. So I'm going to get that quickly fixed up, and it'll more than likely just automatically play the bumper, because we are about to get to, if I can find it, And sidewalk talk, talk where we aren't actually on a sidewalk, yeah. Alright, so now that we're finally here, how was your week or month, Mr. Thing? Well, um, I've been thinking about a lot of my vacation that I'm going on. I'm going with my brother and my dad to Minnesota uh, we're probably going to leave at around 6 o'clock in the morning on Thursday, and we will be back home by sometime Friday of next week after that, so that should be fun. As for gaming news, I've been idling for cards, because god dang, there are so many cards on Steam right now. And another thing that I've been doing is playing my PlayStation 3. I've been... I've beaten the game The Last of Us about um, either four to five times, so I'm playing it on easy to try and get all of the trophies, <laughs> and I've been playing Uncharted 3 for the first time um, after three years, so um, everything's been going well, and I have no complaints whatsoever. All right, and my news is I've recently graduated high school. Um, Congrats. I, thank you very much. I have finished grade 12, not yet my SHSM program, which is Specialist High Skills Major, which gets you free training, a red, well, I won't be getting the red seal on my diploma. I already got my diploma, but I'll be getting paperwork saying that I completed the program, which is supposed to get you, um, more probability of getting into a job sometime in your life and fortunately I was able to pull through with my math mark as my teacher 
who I've shouted out a couple times on Twitter. Um, and I thank you a lot for passing me. It Just that night of graduation was pretty well the best night of my life. I'm, I'd try to think of any other night that was any better, but I think grad night is easily the best one in my entire life. <laughs> Even though I did just, I did just pass math, but I'll at least take that over not graduating and having to, well, th then again, there are only three math credits required, but I'm one of those who'd, um, I, I, not all my high school career, I've been supportive of English for four years, and more so of math for four years, but that's just how I see it. And then, as mentioned on my most recent Blazy log, which is number 22, which unsuspectedly ended up being the premiere of season 6, because I ended up, um, first I found out that I, um, well, I had the file to it, but... Just something with the file names and stuff confused me, and then I deleted what I had for um, video or whatever. Oh yeah, of the first attempt, which was just carrying on with season 5, which actually went well, and then I somehow accidentally deleted those video files, and... Um, searched a couple times to make dead sure it was gone for good, so I ended up having to start a new season 6. And the previous week, I, 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 I don't know why I was mentioning that I wasn't putting out much that day. Or maybe it was just Saturday that I wasn't doing much. But mostly because, again... Prom night and the prom party didn't go oh so well. The prom, because I was a total friggin' wallflower. <laughs> Which, if any of you ever go to a prom, don't be a wallflower. And if people drag you around to dance, you obey their orders. Otherwise, you're gonna feel like you're in hell. <laughs> Or in or in mental danger to yourself, possibly? I don't know. But, and then in terms of the prom party, just finding out that there ended up being alcohol involved, and then the police got involved because there were a couple of people fighting over not paying their admission into the party, and kind of drove me nuts, but I'm getting over it a bit, but anyway, and then I'm here doing Blades on Nation number 15, and I'm trying to come up with something else to talk about, but you know what, to heck with that idea, actually, that's another bumper I gotta re-add in, I think. I am getting a bad feeling I gotta... Actually, maybe... No, that's not the wrong... Right one. I was about to put details in. We one want... Thing. One thing. I did not go to my high school prom. Because I didn't feel like... Buying a nice... Tux, or even renting one. I just, I just didn't feel comfortable going and... You know, they have those limos with those poles in them. And... When I see a pole inside of a limo, I'm thinking, you know what, this is probably not my thing. I'm just going to not go. <laughs> no offense to people who actually did go and had a great time. I'm happy for you. No disrespect. But the prom thing just wasn't for me. I just enjoyed myself staying home, doing what I mostly love to do is read, music, and video games. That's it. 
And if, if you really want to know what exactly happened through my mind, it's on my official blog, which is on Blogspot, well, Blogger, whatever you want to call it. And there's a whole right up there. But it definitely made me feel better. But anyways, let's get to the rundown, shall we? Brace yourselves, it's the rundown. Alright. So, on the rundown, we have actually a few articles, including um, two pairs that are pushed together because they're too darn related. The first pair is that um, on The Onion, which is a, apparently a satirical news site, as I found out from the thing tonight, they had an, art an article claiming that 5 million viewers had been arrested for pirating the Game of Thrones finale, which turned out to be not only shocking because of how it ended, but also even more shocking because the FBI showed up to everyone's store only to find out from saying <laughs> the onion is a satirical site and it's utter BS yep it just takes current events that are happening in the world manipulates it and then just makes up this one story however <laughs> the side of the story you will find out tonight well not side of the story but as if it did actually happen, what I'm gonna get into. Then my next... What? It would be funny if it actually happened to 5 million people. Oh, uh, that would be horrible. Are, are they gonna be able to fit all those people in the jail cells? Well, what I'm... Actually, we'll get into that in the details. Okay. And then the next one I'll do, and then the next... Technically three you can do if you want. So the next one is Microsoft takes down no IP or no dash IP dot com domains. Jerk move by Microsoft or is it reasonable? Now it's a you thing. Well, um in the past, Microsoft has actually been a great company because they have provided all those Windows operating systems. Unfortunately, one is better than the next one, i.e. Windows 2000 was bad, XP was good, Vista was bad, Windows 7 is good, and now Windows 8 came out and it's kind of uh, sucky. And, um, well, it's getting better, but what yeah, I meant is. was the next two topics. <laughs> but I just... The fact that Microsoft is trying to, like, take these domains and claiming that they have been abused by malware creators is, I think it's it's immoral to do those kinds of things. I myself am not a hacker. I don't manipulate websites. I do get posted phishing links every once in a while, and I do mess around with those. But sorry to interrupt, but that's for the details, Zio. <laughs> 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 that, that, what I meant was the next two articles. Oh, so the next two. Okay. Yeah, that's what I meant. <laughs> sorry okay. about that. All right, so. So the next one it says more justification for drone strikes overseas on memo. My opinion, well, well, here's the fact: I was born in the United States. I am classified as an American citizen, and I do believe that terrorism is something that is to greatly be focused on because we have people who are supporting our country like the Marines, the Navy, the Coast Guard, etc. They all do a wonderful job, and there are no words to describe how much they contribute to our community. And I, I do believe that we, it is a good idea for us to take out people who are willing to attack the United States. But when it comes to citizens... 
it, it's like this episode of 24. I don't know if I don't know if any of you have seen 24 before, but I'm watching um, Live Another Day. I am too, but it's it's like that thing where you get somebody to drop a missile from one of these drones, and it ends up killing people accidentally. You know, stuff like this just happens all the time. There was rec- there was recently another, I think there was another drone attack that ended up injuring several Americans in some sort of an embassy. I don't remember which one. I don't know if that's confirmed, but stuff like that just happens. We're we're trying to protect our country from all of these terrorists, and um, you know, from the one in September 2011. Uh, Al Awalki, he was put on one of the, I think he was on a, a most wanted list. I'm pretty sure, and he was taken out. But, but, but um, on that day, it says, quote unquote, two other Americans also died in the attack, including Al Awalki's 16 year old son. But the government said that they weren't the ones who were targeted. So, even if the drone did actually kill him. It was obvious. It was obviously a mistake. There's no drone that is perfect. I do believe that not every single drone is not hackable, because I'm pretty oh. sure there is a way for us to do that. There was a there was a there was a virus that came that um that we used against Iran's computer systems or something like that, and it caused a lot of damage. So. I think I think it's justified, but targeting citizens that haven't done anything or posed no threat to the United States or Canada, in your case, JBG Blaze, <laughs> I don't. I think it's I think it's justified, but don't kill people who don't who actually threat to um, attack a country. And, and then the, the next topic. And then the other one. <laughs> um, so. Apparently, the IESF, or oh, what the heck is, what is that? I'm trying to figure out what the abbreviation of that is. I think it's International Esports Federation. Right. I think so, that is what it is. So they removed the male-only restriction from its tournaments, and I think this is a, I think this is a win for the female audience because so many more female video gamers today than there were like pretty much every every single year ago and i've seen a lot of these articles they're saying about 50% gamers are actually women it's getting close to that and like there was a there was a previous article that said that more women are actually graduating from high school colleges universities than men are so i think this is a good idea uh, to be honest, I actually have not played Dota 2, StarCraft 2, Ultra Street Fighter 4, Hearthstone, or Tekken Tag Tournament 2. But for those who who support this um, this the dropping of the restriction to females, is definitely definitely should be grateful. And I am grateful that they're starting to put women into the more into the more gaming opportunities than they've ever had before. So ready to get into the details, which you've pretty much dug into a little bit. <laughs> no, no offense, for, man. For all of them, or just the one I'm talking about now? Uh, all of them. All of them? Yeah, that's what the rundown is for. Is just skimming through all of them, and then the details is for. Yeah, it's it's ten o'clock. Game. I'm tired. I pretty much forgot what I was supposed to do. Okay, so, <laughs> all right. Here's here's the rundown. The onion is an is a hilarious oh. what? We just what? went through the run. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> Bazinga! Uh, all right, let's get to the details. Hashtag Bazinga. That's the new word for today's podcast. All right, sounds good. And. Digging down. Let's get to the details, shall we? Alright, so whether or not I edit it a, a bit of it out, not sure if I will though. 
Of course, it won't be um, meaning any offense to you saying, but I guess I should have told you first about that the rundown is just basically giving a quick hypnosis, and then the rundown then, I mean, yep. details is where we fully discuss it. Anyway, I'm probably yep. going to edit that out, too. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so to the first article. Original. Well, oh, yep. Oh, sorry. Like Mr. West Wilson says, the famous Skype dance, which is where neither neither of us know when it's our turn to talk. All right, I'll <laughs> go first. Sounds good to me. So. Um, I, when I came across The Onion, I first of all was fooled, and I had no idea why. I was like, this is the most ridiculous story I've ever seen. And then someone showed it to me, and they say, you do realize that The Onion isn't real news. And I say, well, what do you mean? And it's like, it's not really happening. So I, I did some research, and I realized that all the stories that The Onion did are actually based off of current events that are happening and not actually real news. So I'm like, oh, okay. So when JBJ Blaze put this up, I was like, um, are you sure you want to do this one? <laughs> All right. And but then anyway. I, and then I gave it another look, and then I'm thinking, I, because I, when I first found out about this, at probably before supper time or so, I told my mother about it, and she disagreed with me that it's just a waste of time and money. And that, uh, and the whole piracy issue. Only to then find out tonight, what I was telling my mother about was fake. Yeah. I'm that just totally blew my mind. The onion is hilarious. There are so many articles. In fact, I think you can actually order books that have like a whole bunch of news articles that you can read and just enjoy the creativity that they put in these articles. It's it's funny. You got to go check them out. And then to the um, part of it that I wanted to get into, honestly, well, in the first place, like I said, 5 million viewers, that's a lot of households that the FBI is invading and over just downloading while well, that they could be invading or um, according to them I'm not sure what the right word of um, possibility or whatever it is what the right word is and that's just Gmail ticking me but um, that's just a heck of a lot of people that the FBI is breaking into and a lot of people hmm. going into shock. Even yeah, it though is. not literally. <laughs> but... <laughs> and I, I forget if I ever did mention this before on Blaze on Nation, maybe on the third episode, which I think was when I was criticizing copyright.net or comms um, thing about that you're protecting your stuff from being stolen and but back to the whole grammatical thing when people use the term stealing to describe something it absolutely ticks me off because in the cyber world well cyberspace I hate calling it that to be honest on the internet when you're so-called stealing something, it's just copying from one destination, from one person's computer or a folder, to another person's computer or another folder. And by definition, stealing is what you are taking, that person you're taking from is losing it, which copying does not involve. The original owner still possesses a copy 
but you have another copy of it and copying I do believe is of course the right word for it and do you sound like you're about like you want to say something on that yeah that the whole stealing thing is just remember the time where we had VHS tapes and we would put them into a VCR and then we would record the music video or record some sort of an episode of a cartoon remember those days well oh yes that's, we, we that's have... called that's called sharing when yeah. you're stealing something you're taking something that somebody made as their original and you're claiming it as your own that's stealing that's not necessarily sharing or borrowing or anything it's like the same thing with music when you're using LimeWire or Frostware or whatever and you're downloading a song from somebody else's computer technically you are sharing you are borrowing it doesn't matter you're not stealing stealing is when you take somebody's music or their own work of art or whatever and claiming it as your own and then I find that to be more like plagiarism yeah well pl plagiarism to me has to do with more of using somebody else's words without signing them in a book that you have made or in an article that you made or whatever without actually citing who originally said that or claiming what that person said you know but you altered it very very closely yeah plagiarism is more of a a thing that high schoolers focus on than yeah than anything it's else focused on a big bit and i i can still remember in english 3c which was first semester of my grade 12 year which I had just completed and for some reason I smell potatoes which might be my breath but anyhow I'm likely editing that out anyhow before I get more off course with stenches in the air anyway so in our English 3C class this one day we um, had this one at activity where we'd go to a certain side of the room on the matter of I think the first one was do you illegally download music and I think I went to the no side of the room with my reasoning being that it's not illegal which is absolutely true well in the US and I can still remember um, in Guinness World Records there was this record of the most illegally downloaded thing and I knew that didn't seem correct next thing I know it actually is correct because in the US downloading is illegal in Canada we're freaking lucky you can do all the downloading you like, it is not illegal. Unless, I suppose, you do claim the works as your own. Which I personally would never do. And, um, I feel like I'm going on a bit of a tangent with this. And I'm finally getting back on track here. And then we went on to the part of is piracy or something like that the same as plagiarism and I think nearly everyone in the class went to the no side which is a which is definitely a good thing in my opinion because um, that's a thing plagiarism again you're claiming something as your own as with piracy you're just um, basically like you said file sharing and the work is still claimed as the original copyright holder and something might be modified but 
Yeah. So, ready for the next topic? Yep. Alright, so... I'm not sure if I still have the bumper in here. I guess I do not. But, um... So... We have... And I do... I did put it as jerk move because... I prefer not to use a curse word for it. <laughs> that, that's exactly what I was thinking, though. D move by Microsoft, which involves them taking down no-ip.com domain names. And personally, I went to them after, if you've heard of them, DynDNS or DYNDNS. Have you heard of the, that site? Mm. Well, basically, Maybe I, have. I don't uh, remember. Basically, I guess short for dynamic DNS is pretty much their um, sort of literal literal version of it. That's okay. the right way to put it. But um, I guess they founded their um, right or whatever. I don't think right is the right word for it, though, as pun, or as punerific, or ponderful as that sounds. I am a wizard with my words here, but with their decision to take it upon themselves to um, take down those domain names, and I... I think it was. I think it does involve no-ip.com domains as well, as in domain names that actually have that part to it instead of um, some other um, domain name provided by no IP. But what well, what's your thoughts on this? Even though you had described them in the rundown but so that it's in details <laughs> well I'm not really a big fan of hacking websites I don't think websites deserve to be hacked by hackers but it's a I guess it's a common day occurrence that happens you have all these people who are willing to hack in order to get in to find new loopholes to find things that they can get past and spread the word you you have all of these white hackers or th these it's these hat hackers you have the white hats which are basically the people who are trying to find a loophole in this system and they let the original company know about it gray hat hackers are the people in between they're the ones who might discover the exploit you know and the the person if their company doesn't listen and ignores them then they do something i guess a little silly to prove that it can actually be hackable and then you have the black hat black hat hackers who basically just find exploits and systems and they get carried away away with it but in this case, Microsoft has been around for a long time now, and if they are doing this to to thwart this global cyber crime epidemic, then more power to them. I just I have I think I have a secure enough computer with a stable antivirus, anti spyware programs running on there but if it's a way to prevent a lot of uh, now something tells me that the next world war is going to be involved with technology <laughs> i can just i can just sense it right now either either um the issue going on in the middle east will resolve or not or we will be at war with machines like in the Terminator movies. Oh, gosh. That That's would all. Be... That would be scary. Very, very yes. scary. Yes. Absolutely. And actually, I did forget to mention 
that Microsoft actually got permission from a court to do this as to thwart the epidemic or supposed epidemic and even I think no IP said it themselves that rather than this happen be warned first that way they can deal with it themselves which is I think <laughs> probably what would have been better unless they were being pushovers but then again I don't really see anything about that no IP were being pushovers and I do respect Microsoft and I am respecting I am respecting them so much more with their new CEO. Yes, Steve Ballmer, you were a pushover. Now seeing what Microsoft has been doing with Mr. Nadella, which is far better than what they had before. And just sorry that this happened, no IP. But before I lose my train of thought, let's get to the next topic, which is the justification or, to me, so-called justification for the drone strikes. Well, like I said before, the whole drone thing, in order to protect certain countries and in order to eliminate and serve justice to the people who are trying to attack our nation is definitely a plus because it's due to national security however we all know that these certain drone strikes have the potential unfortunately the things audio didn't come out well but what he said was to hinder or kill untargeted individuals who don't actually partake in this kind of uh, planning to attack the nation and basically we all make mistakes and some t and we can't run away from those mistakes but that doesn't mean that we can't change the future and how our nation protects itself by using this massive amount of technology that's superior in one way but flawed in the other way and if it's for our national security then so be it I just want to live do my job buy groceries you know just make <laughs> my living the best as I can because I'm fortunate right now and I want it to continue to do it that way it may not be the way that I want it right now but I'm still playing along so um, so basically you just want to live the life you have Yes, right now. Sounds viable. Yep, there are some people who are less fortunate enough every single place that you can think of right now. Especially overseas. Yes, definitely. So, in conclusion, I think there has to be more justification for the drone strikes because we're all human, we all make mistakes. We build technology. Technology has a flaw in pretty much every single place, but we don't know it until we find it. And if we don't find it, it may already end up being too late for somebody to take over. But I want to live and feel safe in my house and at my job. So, yeah, that's all I got to say. Well, honestly, when you did mention... Um your view of it, it 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 did kind of surprise me I'll be honest there cuz honestly myself I honestly find it disgusting that well in the first place they're launching these drone strikes which to kill how many terrorists it results in numerous upon numerous deaths, and I probably just screwed up my grammar there totally, but for the sake of this, User entered your channel. User left your and channel. then 
And then I saw this video of Obama, which isn't in the show notes, but that basically having the risk of killing thousands of civilians over a small, a month, a way smaller number of terrorists that just these numbers are what justifies the actions to get rid of these few terrorists. And heck, even with the latest event, with, um, although it doesn't involve the drone strikes, but with releasing the Guatemala Bay imprisoned terrorists for trade for Bo Bergdahl, that's releasing people who've killed maybe not quite that number of civilians that these drones are blowing to shreds, but they've at least done a pretty good number of casualties, and it, in my opinion, I think that's like putting these dead lives in vain. I'm not sure how harsh that sounds, or deep it sounds, but I think that is what it is. It's putting those lives in vain by releasing these terrorists for that purpose. And who knows, they could go off again. And j just the whole thing again with drone strikes, I feel it makes them no better than a terrorist, because a terrorist's job is to cause hell for these other citizens and, of course, peeve off the American government because every single thing that happens overseas they have to get involved with and it usually ends up in things going worse than what they should be and I it's just shocking to see this just this whole reasoning behind it's okay to kill all these people for killing a couple other people who, yes, they would likely kill maybe added together the same number, but does that make you any different? I don't think so. I really do not think so. It's like the... I don't know if you remember, but back in the 40s, we were trying to decide if we should invade parts of uh, Asia where Japan has set up you know, these huge military bases and uh, Harry S. Truman was going over the plan of how many men they might possibly lose if they tried to invade these certain parts of the country and they realized that in that case you know Japan still didn't surrender and they gave it some thought and it says you know if you don't surrender then you will face utter destruction and of course Japan was in the middle of surrendering but they didn't throw in the towel just yet and we took the statistics from how many men we could lose if we invade to the number of how many American lives that we can save instead of invading pretty much came to the conclusion that we ended up dropping both of those bombs uh, little brother and big boy I'm trying to remember the the names of the nukes over Hiroshima and Nagasaki and that resulted in a lot of civilian casualties but it was something that we had to do in order to make Japan surrender and save American lives and sometimes we just have to think about stuff really quickly because we don't we don't have a lot of time especially during a war where like even the slightest decision can really make a huge difference and I think that's that's what we 
just decided to do. We dropped the bomb. And still to this day, we, we talk about it several times over. We have people who think the second or the first, the second bomb was not justified. Even the first one wasn't a means of saving more American lives. And it resulted in Japan's surrender. And we act, the Americans ended up winning the war. And just to get in it, to get it in there, because I have a feeling someone would wonder why I didn't include it in there. But with their with the recent decision by Obama and the government to not involve themselves in, I believe it was Iraq, their most recent decision to keep out of there. Even though my older brother um, thinks they'll probably find some other way to get their noses into the con the conflict there. But anyways, shall we get to the final topic? Yep. Awesome. All right. So the final topic here involves the. International Esports Federation, or IESF. I I think I got the um, abbreviation thingamagummery right, or acronym, whatever it's called. In which they recently overturned, and I believe this is actually the most recent news by tonight's podcast, and. Um, and I forgot to announce the show in my flippin' awesome group for the channel. But anyways, their most recent change to one of their rules or restrictions or what have you for their tournaments, which originally they had made their tournament male only. And I believe... Um, it was first because this higher up thing, correct me if I'm User wrong, but only wanted male gamers, and then and if you wanna shut it a day later, and I think Team Speak is yeah, quit. trying to butt in. Disconnected. Edit it. Huh? Disconnected. Nothing. <laughs> oh, edited. <laughs> But anyways, and so they, and so pretty much a day later, they changed their minds and allowed female gamers, which to me, that's a very good thing. And I admit to having a bit of a past where even once on RuneScape, there turned out to be this, um, player who was female, and s quite a few guys in the RuneScape world crowded around her, although I decided to be more kind, I think, but I think it's a great thing for there to be more gender equality for video games, or better yet, just simply all-around equality than just the whole thing, the whole stereotype or what have you, that it's just guys playing video games when it's not just us. And having a restriction on it almost even enforces it in a way or helps it out. What do you think, what do you think of this thing? I think it's great because they're expanding there so many opportunities to female gamers who haven't actually had the chance to participate in these tournaments and with the number of female gamers growing and growing every single year it's 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 not a surprise that they're actually starting to let females get in there more because we are not these 
misogynistic people who don't like women participating in these kinds of things. But there are girls out there who are willing to just do these things because it's what they love to do. It's either a hobby or passion, or it might even turn into a career. We, but we obviously don't know that unless we ask those certain individuals. Personally, it's another step in the right direction to allowing all gamers to participate, both genders, in this huge world where there's loads of opportunities to become involved in tournaments of games that people actually really like to play and enjoy, and they play with their friends and yeah so yeah and, and more girls you, why not if you look on youtube there's quite a few gamers up on there too there's and um the ones i'm picking off are um i i heard about them from the shaft podcast which i've definitely mentioned loads of times on this show but um there's omg it's firefox um, I asked Cupquakes, even a couple of the Yogg's cast members are girls, and they play video games. And, again, with the whole misogynistic thing, it's bothersome, and it's definitely, definitely an awesome thing to get rid of that awful stereotype. Or even that girl game. Or, uh, I'm not sure whether to say girl or female gamers. Because even apparently one of the YouTubers who's actually pretty small. She doesn't like the term. And yeah. her her reason for it is because she thinks those who are defined as girl gamers are basically just models holding up a controller which I would never define as a girl gamer cuz they're not actually playing a game they're not into playing games they're just there for model work that's not playing a game that's just being in front of a camera striking a pose that gets the fancies of Probably a lot of men and possibly a few women or so here and there. Yeah, um, I've, I've seen a lot of those memes between the terms gamer girl and girl gamer. And they're trying to decipher which of the two actually plays games. And, you know, judging from my viewing all of those, it's definitely girl gamer because... Because the gamer is on the end, but that's that's just something that that should totally be discontinued and should not be a stereotype. Just make it open. Everybody can be a gamer. It's their decision. If they want to do something else, then more power to them. I mean, there are a lot of cosplayers out there. A lot of people who participate in these tournaments. Just do what you want to do and choose who you want to be. That's all. And it's even kind of like in. I hate to say it, but in real life, and by hate to say it, I mean using the terminology in real life with all these jobs and everything, that things have become so much more open to just everyone, whether it's your gender, sexual orientation, nationality, any of that, more people are getting into more jobs and pursuing their passions and just how the ages have changed past these rude stereotypes that for a logical person like you and me and quite a few others out there don't make sense worth a darn. And there's a reason they don't make sense. Because they're untrue. But anyway, I think we've pretty much done good on that, on that topic. What do you think? Yep. 
Let's go. All right, so let's get to the end of this. We're actually doing very well on the time here. At least I think we are. So first off, PC Gamer and Bundle Stars, and I guess this actually kind of ties in well with the other, with the previous topic we just had. There will be a link in the description, I mean not description, in the show notes where you can get yourself a free copy of Dino D Day in which they're having five weeks of a uh, free game each week which you can redeem on the Steam platform and I just got it today and I await the day I play it because I'll have to download the game and all that um, FF Split as always I'm waiting on the capability to add in mp3 files for bumpers although if I do get into actual gaming streams I'll probably try that out for that um, Ender Radio which is my Minecraft music radio project bit.ly slash ender dash radio um, if you go to bit.ly slash Blazemon, B L A Z A M O N, um, and you can buy whatever you like on Amazon. More power to you. If you use that link, though, you will, um, the referral credits from your purchase will go towards helping out the show and possibly other projects I've been doing. And then, lastly, bit.ly slash blaze engine, that is with just the one E. And you can make up your own engine site. And I think if you do pay for a plan, the same thing, referral credits, will go towards helping out the projects that I do. And do you have any shout outs to give well um it's nobody in particular but well especially you because you're obviously the host of this podcast and i thank you for putting me on again you're welcome. um another shout out to naughty dog because uncharted 3 is so freaking awesome and the last of us is also awesome as well um another shout out would probably go to um, you know, I think that's it. I don't think I have any other shout outs, but um that's I guess that's all I have to say. Before we do go, um you can follow the podcast on Twitter at Blazon Nation. And if you see the title wherever, don't know how to spell it. Not it, but the actual title. And we air the show on twitch.tv slash jbjblaze in hopes that there will be a bigger audience for the live airing of the show. But anyways, I thank you for coming back on the show again thing and hopefully we can maybe even work something out to keep you on the show, possibly. It's nice not being the only one on here. Yeah, but you could use some company. <laughs> definitely. And do you have any last words? Um, go crazy. All right. And I was hoping to get to watch Carrie tonight, but I'm not sure there's time for that now. But anyway. Good movie. Have you seen the new one? Yes, I have. Oh, it was awesome. I can't wait to watch the original, which I I forget if I've Instagrammed it, but I probably should if I haven't already. Anyway, good night! What do you mean you want more, or did you miss something? Hey, if so, go to blazonnation.tk for more articles and show notes, to flippinawesome.engine.com slash bnp for show notes, and check out the show on Stitcher at bit.ly slash bnp stitcher. Have a good night, everybody!
Alright, and I actually just about forgot to mention, um, this summer I am having a bit of difficulty finding a summer job, but if I do, hopefully that works out. But I do have a Patreon campaign out right now, which it works basically like a continuous Kickstarter. Um, Patreon.com slash JBJBlaze. I will put the link in the show notes and you can donate if you really like what I do. And doing so will help me keep up what I do and possibly keep on doing it as much as I am now, if not more this summer. And, yeah, I think that's about it. Good night.